Hey everybody, this is Katie. Welcome to Wit Finish Wednesday Live. I'm really excited tonight. I have John back behind the vice and I'm right here. And tonight we're going to be tying and I'm right a here. sulfur. And tonight we're going to be tying. And um, it's our little variation of a sulfur that we like to fish here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And the cool thing about sulfurs is that you can really change up the colors to match whatever hatch that you want to. Um, so I wanted to show really quick a picture that we got from Dun and Dun. And it's really cool because it shows the different stages of a sulfur. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a cool night. We're going to tie up some different colors and sulfurs, um, including the Katie bug. And I um, hope you guys enjoy watching. But before we get to that, we're going to do a drawing for last week's fly that you guys tied and they were really awesome we did um a contest for you guys to tie up your version of the um chubby trim noble so the winner this week is going to be given a really awesome fly box from umqua right real quick hey e richard hey gary barnes freddie is on in the house and don bishop what's going hey on guys, guys? Hey, Richard. Hey, Gary Barnes. Hey, Fred Block. Hey, Don Bishop. Thanks for watching. So let's do a quick drawing to see who our winner is this week. Hey, Randy. Hey, Jimmy Root. Okay, so the winner of the fly box this week for tying up their version of the Chubby Chair Noble that we tied live last week. So if you didn't see that, be sure you go back and watch that one. It was really cool. Um, is Electric Tire. So congratulations, Electric Tire. You are the big winner this week of the Umqua LT Standard Premium Fly Box right here. Hope you love it. We'll be sending that to you. And um, if you guys haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe. And here is John. All right. Thank you so much, Katie, for kicking us off tonight. Uh, and E. Richard is Surfer Dad. So that'd be Ed Richard. So welcome, Surfer Dad, and congratulations to John Collins, uh, Electric Tire. He's he's uh, he took a break there for a little bit, a little bit, but it's good to see him back on tying. And he must have the luck of the Irish on him or with him uh, tonight. So he'll get that cool box. Um, so as Katie was saying, we're going to tie the uh, the Katie bug tonight, which is uh, really a, a combination of a bunch of different flies and tying techniques, but also has some of our favorite materials. What's up, Mr. Bashirs? Good to see you hopping on here Hello. tonight. Um, and um, But this is actually a, a fly that, that we primarily fish in our local tailwaters. Um, it does work in the park, but this is uh, a, great to tie, a great fly to tie in smaller, smaller sizes. Um, I want to say smaller, not super small, 16, 18 for sulfurs. And then you know, twenties or so for, uh, for bluing olives, but, um, but they make a, um, they float really well. Uh, they, they mimic different, different stages of the, of the sulfur. But the, the cool thing is, is like I said, we'll tie them smaller and bluing olive is depending on what hatch you have coming up, you can change the size, change the colors of the, the materials and you can, you can fish a lot of different hatches with this pattern. It's not very, uh, not, uh, not too difficult to switch it up. So <clears throat> one of the, uh, the first fly that I tied that I caught a fish with dry fly anyway, was a, uh, was a puff daddy. And that's a really cool fly. Uh, I, I, we still fish it today, but, um, it's one that you've got to keep the, the dry shake on. You've got to uh, keep it, um, treat it so it will float real well. And, um, <clears throat> we I wanted to, to create something that had a little bit more, oomph to it, a little more floatiness to it. So um, that's really where watching um, the Schmehan guys, uh, and you've seen us tie that a few years ago, we did it, I believe. What's up, Mike? Um, we we did it where you take the CDC feather and you pull it through, you cut it, you pull it through, you make like an upright wing. And that, and I really like that, that pattern. It looks really nice. Um, but I wanted one that, um, that had more, had a little more hackle going around it. So we we combined really that Schmehan style upright wing and um, the uh, the puff daddy together to make one. And just sheer, I don't know why, but just sheer fishing it um, with different tails. The puff daddy typically doesn't have a tail, 
Um, and I fish it with uh, uh, CDL caught really on the rooster uh, tail for like the three split tails make it look fancy. Um, but a, a shuck of trigger point fibers is really the, um, the money uh, tail for us. So with that said, um, we'll switch over to this camera here and I'll show you the materials we're going to use. Uh, first of all, the hook is going to be the A-Rex Freshwater 530 in size. Tonight we'll use size 16 and 18. And uh, this is uh, just a marvelous dry fly hook. And um, for the body or for the tail, we're going to use EP trigger point fibers. Uh, you can use whatever you want to. Um, Zelon will work nice. Uh, the, the poly yarn from Silver Fly works great. Um, the main reason I like the EP trigger point fibers is you're not using much of it, just a little teeny, teeny tiny bit. And the color variations, you see, I've got three different colors here and I've got this new package. I'm going to show you a trick on um, like opening those up. Um, but the, the color variations are just out of this world on the, the trigger point fibers. It is expensive, but you just don't use much of it with this, this type of pattern. Um, for the body, we're going to use uh, the Semperfly uh, K-Pock and the Sulfura for the sulfur color. So that right there is right side up. And um, we'll probably use some Turkey Biots as well for the body. Uh, either case, the thorax is going to have that K-Pock in it. And for the wing, we'll use some sort of um, uh, CDC. CDC is just a great material. What's up, Truman? Howdy. Hi, Truman. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for evening. watching. <laughs> Happy Wednesday to you, Truman. And if you guys have any questions or if you just want to say hello or if you um, if you have anything going, finally, this might be the first time ever. Uh, everything's working here. Katie's got everything lined up on her side. So we might actually be able to focus on the tying a little bit tonight. Fingers crossed. Who knows? So, yes, Ed. And Truman, if you didn't know, E. Richard is Ed, a.k.a. Surfer Dad. So here's what we're going to be tying. This is a size 16 here. You see how it's got a, a large footprint. Um, doesn't hang down below the water because we trimmed the bottom hackle. But we've got the uh, the nice wing, um, almost like outriggers going to the side. We've got the upright wing, and it's got some extra oomph right here that's going to keep it uh, keep it floaty. And, uh, and then the trigger point in the back as well. So, um, so that's what we're going to tie. Let's get a hook in the vise. Oh, man, where to put that one? That'll be good. All right, we'll start with a huge size 16. Like I said, for us, we saw Katie's like, yes, you did, Mike. She'll show it to you again. And I tell you what, if y'all keep, keep asking, she will... Um, she will eventually do, a, we'll just move all the cameras to her side and sure. she can do it. Sure, you can just move all the cameras to my side. She's like, you can move it. Oh, happy birthday, Truman. Happy birthday, Truman. Happy birthday. We ought to all sing happy Everybody birthday to Truman. all together now. Yeah, I guess that'd be a good way to get people to log off. Speaking of logging off, two things real quick before I get time. First of all, thank you to everyone for, who has subscribed so far. Um, you know, we, we love to come here on Wednesday night and celebrate Truman's birthday um, and uh, and see everyone. Everyone wishing Truman a happy birthday. That is awesome. This is a cool little community we've gotten together here. Um, we really appreciate everyone subscribing. That helps us grow and uh, get our, get the word out there about this uh, about this little teeny tiny channel we've got. Um, but we're hoping to, to grow it quite a bit. So we're going to do a quick, not a quick, we're going to do a little challenge. Um, so I want to encourage people to comment on the YouTube video. So um, I'm working on a new fly. It's not a new pattern, it's, um, but it's going to be new for you all to see as tie. So I've never posted this pattern, and I'm going to give you some of the materials, and you all guess what it is, and um, whoever, if multiple people guess it, see, Gary is even singing. That's basically singing happy birthday there. Um, if, uh, if multiple people guess it, then next Wednesday we'll, we'll draw a winner. Um, and you'll receive, we'll say two versions of the fly. I've got one sitting right over here that you can't see, but feel free to ask any questions. Maybe I'll give you a hint, but one of the main ingredients is marabou. 
So right there, another big ingredient. It's going to be ice dub. And let's, to keep it a little more interesting, uh, we've got these guys right here. So let's go to the close-up camera here. There we go. So launch to the close-up, to the camera one. Mate, there we go. So large tires beads. What are the large ones used for? I've got them in different colors, but large tying beads. And this uh, this will definitely give it away on not something we usually tie. You ready for this one? There we go. Some surf lawn. What, what was that last one? Surf lawn. So surf. comment in the on the YouTube video. And shoot, you know, I probably ought to go live on Instagram here. Comment on the YouTube video and um, you guys can see. Um, Mike said chickabugger. It's not a chicken booger. Booger. Not a chicken. Let's go ahead and go live on. There we go. Um, so comment on the YouTube video and uh, and Truman. I can't remember if you and I talked about it. So if you know, don't. Why don't you wait till later to comment? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but comment on the YouTube video and if you guys, uh, if most people guess it, then we'll uh, we'll draw a winner and we'll get a couple of the flies. Um, so let's move on to the uh, to the fly. And for everyone on Instagram, I'm sorry. Um, we've been on YouTube talking, wishing Truman a happy birthday and singing to him. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start tying. So you haven't missed a bit of the time. Um, so in the vise, we've got the, <coughs> the size 16 A-Rex Freshwater 503 right here and right here in a size 16. And I'm on, on all the flies, I'm using the Semper Fly 12 aught Nano Silk. And if you remember, I used to use Nano Silk all the time. And then I kind of switched over and was just using Classic Wax Thread. And um, for this one, I really like Nano Silk. It works out pretty well. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. What's up, Jason? If, uh, if you guys are watching on Instagram and you have the ability, I would highly suggest switching over to YouTube if you can. If not, then no problem at all so i'm gonna take a little bit of the the um the nano silk wax the hard wax here just put my thumb on it and pull it down it's one thing that when Trent came over to fish with us he, he and i did the exact same thing we put it on and i'm gonna start it right about a hook hook eye behind the um the hook eye hook eye behind the hook eye and we'll get one layer of thread going down get our scissors Hold the thread tight and just push it across like so. And what's up, Jeff? Hola, senor. Well, Brian's going to be right back. Thank you for the warning, Brian. All right, now we're going to put the, the thread, just open wraps up to the front. And um, I'm going to use some some of the, uh, the trigger point fibers, whatever, earlier. I'm going to start with um, this piece might be just a shade thick. Uh, I'm going to start with this rusty brown because believe it or not, on these, uh, on the sulfurs, I found that using like a dark colored shuck or even having like a dark hot spot at the back is, um, works pretty well. So that's when I started using this darker shuck. So now I'm going to take my, um, uh, take my material, make sure that the ends are somewhat lined up there. They look okay. I'll do a pinch wrap. So that's, Locked in right on top. Okay, you want to switch over to the camera one. There we go. So we've got this wrapped up, uh, hooked in right on top. I want to just do a couple, uh, two or three open spot wraps. Leave it loose so I can pull this to length. Put another one in there. That should be good. And I'm going to keep this right on the top of the hook shank. Like so. And bring it back up. And if there's any the longer fibers sticking out, you can trim them up. But that looks... That was good enough. And now we want to take our, our shuck. Oh, Jeff, you caught some fish for Truman on his birthday. Oh, nice. You were a buddy. He must have posted pics. He did. He did, I'm sure. All right. So you can see when I when I trimmed that, I just put my scissors right there. And I wanted it to be a little bit long. So I put it kind of the fat part of my scissors there and then trimmed it off. So that, um, that leaves my shuck. Just a shade longer 
then uh, like if I look at the entire hook, it's just a, it's almost a long, as long as the, the entire hook, but longer than the hook shank itself, just barely. And the reason I like cutting them like that is when I tie a dozen or so of these, all the shucks are the same length. Um, so that makes it kind of kind of cool. All right, so we've got that part done. Um, now I'm going to take a turkey biop. And this is uh, real fancy stuff here. It's just turkey biot or sulfur orange turkey biots here. And pull it. So I've got it right here. I'm going to take it and just take one off like so. And um, if you look, you've got this little bit of a, almost like a membrane on top. It's a little bit clear on top. And you'll have a little ridge, right? That little notch. There you go. You should go see it now. This little notch um, right on the top of it right there. So that's what, what the way I tie it in anyway. That's what I want that going up. I'll moisten it just a pinch. And that's just going to keep it, help it not be too brittle. And I'll make sure my thread is right there at the back. I'll put it in. And one of the tricks I've found is if you'll tie it in at the bottom, it'll help with that first wrap. So I've got, I have the, the buyout tied in. Now there's not much um, uh, tapered to, to this. And if you look at the sulfurs, you don't need much, but um, on when you wrap the buyout, it'll give you a little bit of a taper, but I like to build just a little bit more, but don't go overboard. This nano silk is 50 denier, it's very thin. Very, it's very thin, so I'm, I'm really not building much of a taper at all. You can see there's just a little bit there, and that's that's plenty. So now I can um, do a, a little half hitch here. So I want to use my rotary vise on this. And if, if you don't want to use your rotary, or if you don't have a rotary, that's fine. Um, you don't. I think it took me a couple of years to start doing this. Um, We'll grab Nan's. I don't think Nan's on tonight, but we'll grab Nan's favorite hackle pliers. It's a memory of her because she's probably working or sleeping, getting ready for work. Pull this around so it shouldn't fold the wrong way. There we go. So you'll hold the tail. Well, Sometimes they just don't want to cooperate. If they don't, you kind of have to. You have to encourage it. That's right. Katie knows all the lingo. I'm trying to look at it with the light the way it is. I can barely see it, but I'll figure it out in a second or I'll break it off. I will call that fine. All right. So it twisted the wrong way, but we're going to go with it anyway. So I'm just going to bring it up like so, going the wrong way. You can see the, the first part, I don't like the way it looks at all. Let me take my time with it. So that's if you want it, if you didn't want the ribs on there. The ribs are not natural, but I like the way it, it sits on the water with the ribs. So I like, just like the way they look. There we go. So bring this up like so going the correct way and we'll do another half a wrap so i'm going to bring this around three times and um it's not b foss so i got three wraps on there pull it tight and i'll snip this off Bring this around and work our thread back up to the front so that is completely locked off. We got a nice little body, nice little shuck. All is good. And you can see how thin my shuck was. Like there's not really much material at all. And you can see once we get on a size 16 or even smaller hook, that's that's more than enough. That's more than enough. And the way it floats, I don't know if the trout sees it as a as a shuck. What's up, trout freak? I'm surprised you're not watching on uh on YouTube. Trap Freak's got a good YouTube channel as well. Um, or as well. He has one period. We're working on one. <laughs> All right. So um, I've got the uh, sulfur color K-pop dubbing here. And here it is. There's Sulfuria. 
And I'm just going to pull off, pull out the other box just a little bit. I want to pull it out. Usually the fibers will be kind of, would be a line going out. I say usually because usually they are. That's what's fun about live because I don't like, I can't like, I just have to There's make no it. I just have to make <laughs> make it work. Make it up well, as you go. Trout Freak, Freak, we're live on YouTube right now, and it's it's definitely a lot cooler than than the old Insta Twitter. Not a circus peanut. They've got a comment on the like after we post it. They've got a co comment on the uh, the video. So oh. I guess Katie. I guess Katie. Um, okay. Katie gave away one thing. It's not. Oh, I, I already gave away a few things that it's not. Okay. So they have to comment on the video after it's posted. But I told them Marabou, I stub, That's large funny. tires, beads, and surf lawn. Yep. All well, right. I'll give you some hints then. There you go. Okay. So we've got uh, got our, our dubbing loop here, or our dubbing loop, our dubbing noodle here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back to the back. Have it start right about where we want it, which is right roughly where the thorax is, and we'll bring it forward and bring it to the eye. And now we're going to build this up a little bit. This is kind of that this is not the tricky part at all. It's just part of it. Okay. So now we've got really a nice little uh, little bug started here. It's not a big deal. It's just, you know, we've got a tail, we're shuck, we've got a body, we've got a nice little abdomen, we've got a nice little, very small, um, as you can see right here, you've got a very small uh, taper, and then we've got the, the thorax. So nice abdomen, thorax, tail. So now all we need is a wing. So here's where we're going to get kind of fancy-like. Um, I'm going to use a few tools here. You don't need these tools. They just help out. So we'll switch over to this, this camera here. So I've got the Mark Pettigene tables here. Uh, these are the, the tables. We've got the clips. And I've also got the Swiss CDC clip. And I have a uh, the Mark Pettigene stacker. Uh, we can talk about alternatives to these. Yeah, Trout Freak does look a, a touch better. Um, we can look at uh, alternatives if you don't have the Swiss clip or the Pettigene things, but for right now, and ask uh, about alternatives. And guys on Instagram, here's the, the Swiss clip, here's the Pettigene clip, and here's the, um, the Pettigene tables. Um, but I'm going to show this, and you can ask about alternatives. What do we do if we don't have that? And I'll probably tie one or two of this variation, and then we'll switch it over, and I'll tie one with no no materials at all, no uh, tools at all. So what we do is we pick um, CDC. I've got some of this MFC and blue done. We've got some yellow, pale yellow here, um, here, and uh, some natural. So for this one, let's do, let's make this kind of a brighter one because it does have a darker tail. So we'll use the Swiss CDC in pale yellow. And the first <clears throat> piece of the puzzle, first piece of the pie is going to be the the up white ring upright up white the upright wing and then we're going to put a dubbing loop of cdc going around it so um all we're going to do is we'll take our feather i just pulled one out i actually got a really nice one um i'll probably sort through uh, and find one smaller than this but this will be fine um we take the um and this is a smaller table here's the midge table uh, and they, they come a lot bigger than this. You don't need a whole lot of CDC, especially with a size 16. So I just take my, um, take the, can you see that? Yeah, over here. Uh, so you take the, the CDC feather, push down. And if it breaks like that, you're like, dang it. And then you say some funny words and your wife's like, honey, what's going on? Well, see, that's a fun thing about life. It breaks. Let's grab another one. Okay, so we've got our feather. We'll pull off this junk on the end like that. Take the, the CDC, we'll stroke it all back backwards. What we're doing is we're trying to have the all the, the fibers go directly perpendicular to the stem. So you can see, yep, there we go. So you see that? And I'm going to take the CDC feather, push down, and pull until you hear that little clip. So what I've got for Instagram is this right here. Um, 
So for everyone on YouTube, here's what we've got. So I'm going to take my scissors and just cut the tips off and cut that butt off. So we've got this nicely done. And then I take this other clip right here and we'll clip the uh, clip this down. And so we've got the nice little, um, our nice bunch of the stem folded over here. So it's nice to get a long, a pair of long scissors so you can make one cut. So that's a nice straight cut there. And then we're going to get our stacker. Like I said, this the, the only thing is you got to have a few tools, but you don't have to. It's just how I'm doing it right now. So we've got our stacker right here. So we've got a nice little clump of, um, of CDC. So we've got this in my hands here, my between my fingers. And um, I'm just going to set it right on top. I'm going to kind of measure. So we'll switch over to the, the fly itself. I'm going to kind of measure. I'm going to twist my, my thread. And before I get going, let's go ahead and mark up my thread. I've got a Prisma color, but basically a yellow marker. That's one thing I love about Nano Silk. You don't have to have 500 colors. You can have white and black color, whatever you want. But if there's a color you really like, grab it. Um, so I'm going to take my, my clump here. Set it right on top, and I'll do a wrap and see how my thread went straight up and down. That's exactly what we want. We want the thread to go straight up and down. Um, if you need to stop and redo it, uh, usually if you'll just, um, oh, what's the word? Get that right. There's three total wraps there. Um, if you'll just twist your thread one way or the other, then um, then when you pull it up and you let it loose, see how it's going straight where we want it? Um, if it's going the wrong way, if it's like jumping forward or jumping way back, then just, just twist your thread. Not a big deal. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to put one wrap right in front right here, just like that. If you want to put another one, that's fine. That's not really to, to help it stand up. It's more really to lock everything in. So always better there. Yep. Glad you agree. Glad you agree. There's much better shine. And plus we've got Katie, right, Katie? That's right. She's here on the on the tube. Okay. So let me dig through here. And and here's another tip for everyone with CDC. When you're going through it, and this might be a tip for or a hint on the fly we're going to tie. When you're going through your materials and you find something that you don't like, like this one, that junk CDC feather, throw it in your wastebasket. If you're going through, like, hey, I might be able to use that. Here's a junk one. Like, throw it away. I'm telling you, I've got bags of CDC that are basically 95% junk because I just, I don't throw the, I don't throw stuff away. He doesn't. No. Never. All right. So I'm going to get a decent one here. Here's another good one. So here I'm putting stuff back up. I said just throw it away, but I'll throw one away. Okay, so now we're going to do the exact same thing. We're uh, what's that? This is a size 16, JC. And JC, if you can hop over on YouTube and watch this because you'll be able to see quite a bit better and see what I'm doing on this pedagene clip. Hey, JC. Um, okay, so I've got my feather here. We're going to do the exact same thing. The only difference is we're not going to stack it. So push the, the feather in. Pull tight until you hear that clip. And we're going to cut. I'll try to this up here so Instagram can see. Cut, cut. And um, we'll take our, where do you go? We'll use our, our um, Swiss CDC clip this time. And I'll explain to you why I like the Swiss CDC clip a little better for this application. Because we've done pretty much, wrong scissors. We've done pretty much the same thing. Cut that straight off. So you see, I've got that that in here. Now, I'm gonna split my thread. I'm gonna put this in the dubbing loop, and I'm going to um, uh, twist it up to make a CDC dubbing loop. The reason that I like the uh, the Swiss CDC clamp is because I can get a lot closer to the front versus the um, the pedaging clip. But the good thing with pedaging clips is I can use my stacker a lot easier. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm using both of them. So let's split this thread real quick. We'll make sure we've got a little bit of color on it. And 
we'll um we'll split it oh and as a side note jeff Rowley, are you still on here he's here you are correct uh, i probably work this time i i just got this nice little thread splitter i've wanted one for years literally years and i got one and i've used it three or four times and i've tried to get it to split because nano soap's nice because it won't it splits really easily and that's the first time ever i've gotten a good split with it maybe it's because i don't know how to use it but um, I'm just used to flattening it out and using my bodkin and pulling it out. Um, but who knows? So I've got my um, my thread split. It's kind of hard to see from really from anywhere. My thread split here. I'm gonna take my CDC clip. Pick up the mini Swiss. Yeah, the mini is great. Mini is absolutely great. The winding tool. Um, the, the new Stonfo CDC tool. I don't know about that one. That's one that Jeff uh, mentioned. I have not seen the new one. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in and then we'll pull it back out. So if you see, the butt ends are pretty close to the edge of the um, to the edge of the, the thread. So I don't want a whole bunch of thread or hope the butt ends to stick out too long. I'll pull this out. I'll twist it up and we'll sit here and here's where you can take a drink of coffee or do whatever. You just, yes, Ronald. Great. And Keisha, thank Keisha, you for wishing. Keisha. Thank you for uh, Mama Angler, Ke a.k.a. Keisha. Thank you for wishing Truman a happy birthday. Okay. So we'll just twist this guy up for a sec. We've got it somewhat twisty. Take our fingernail and see if you want to see me. Take your fingernail and we'll run it up like that. We've got it nice and twisted up. I'm not holding it there. Keep it like that. Now we'll just kind of look at it and see. I might want to twist it just a pinch more. Doesn't hurt anything. And now we'll look, see if there's any trap fibers. If there is, I don't really like using a brush for CDC like this because it put it, it tends to pull more out. Because really when you when you wrap it in, it's when you're locking it really nicely. So now that's all we've got. So if I wasn't talking, that wouldn't take too awful long. We'll put one wrap right in the middle, pull all these butt ends here up. And depending on how long your loop is, you might get two, two wraps behind these butt ends. And now we're gonna pull everything forward and we're gonna start jamming these wraps in right in front. See, I'm, I'm putting a wrap in and grabbing, pulling it forward, put another wrap in, pull it forward. And depending on how thick your uh, CDC is, you might not have to put, put quite as much um, in here. But hence, this one had plenty. But I've done these, and I'd rather them be too little full than the other way around. So you see, we've got our, our eye that looks absolutely garbage. But we've got a big, 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 big head here. So I'm going to try to trim up and, and clean up this eye just a little bit without... Um, Don't cut your thread. Oh, gosh. There's always a vote of confidence in the background. That was Gary. Gary's oh, that was Gary that said that. Yeah. Let's see if I can maybe make it work. Like Not like that. Not like that either. Hey guys, that hook is sharp. Okay. Looks a little bit better. Oh, look. Here we go. So you can really see on Instagram. Oh, no. What did or you do? YouTube. Oh my gosh, what is that? Did you put yourself in It's a, a hot hook? it's a hot spot, honey. We got a hot spot. I told you the the uh, hook was sharp. Okay. So our eye is much clearer now. So I'd really just use a thread to uh clean it out. It's not perfect, but it's clear. Um, so now I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm just going to whip finish this. Normally I'd go ahead and put my, I will go ahead and do it right. I need to take a shortcut. So I'm just going to put a little bit of Sally Hansen's on here. I'll tell you what, that, that gum thing's still bleeding. I, mean, I might have to go to the doctor. Jeff Rowley be able to help me. That's right. I'm chumming the CDs. Thank you, Mama Angler. I, I need all the help I can get. Mix a little blood and some power bait in this thing, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Ugh. Okay. 
Kay's like, ugh. I'm going to faint over here. All right, so we'll pull that down. Okay, so the fly is nowhere near, well, it's pretty much done, the tying-wise. But see how big that thing looked? If you can imagine if that was on a size 12, that would be done. But it's not. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull everything forward. Like I said, we're going to expose all these butt ends right here. Those, these are the ones where we tied everything in. So kind of pull that over, pull our scissors like so, and just cut them off. They're still there, but we took, we really got rid of that that big bulk in the back right there. Because when we when the fish looks up underneath, we want to see the body. Okay. Speaking of underneath, we want to take our scissors and just cut it straight off like so. And we're kind of making, if you can see it from the front, we're kind of making a um, almost like a uh, CDC uh, compare dog, even though it's not. So it doesn't have to, we don't have to get all of it off, but we want the bottom stuff to be trimmed up kind of tight under there because we've got all this right here that on the tops, on the sides that are providing flotation. And then this is way too long, so you can just pull everything up. We can start off by just ripping to length and then just just go through and as long as you're not grabbing the scissors and just making one big chop if you do at least try to angle it we can go through and just kind of trim it up a little bit here and there whatever you think good thing john doesn't use razor blades on youtube that's mike phillips not yet not yet um... might be coming so there we go so that that's still a little bit long it's a little more trimming but um that's your rough, rough idea of what the Katie bug is. So no pain, no gain. That's right. I'm telling you, you'll need to post that there may be blood. That's right. This is not kid. Uh, this is not kid friendly. Not for the faint of heart. That's right. So, um, so you can see we've got our, our up white, up right wing here and it's supported by the CDC dubbing loop. And, uh, and that's, that's pretty, pretty much it. Pretty simple. And uh, my eye does not look the best, but we can clean that out and that'll be good. So let's do another one real quick. We'll probably get one or we'll probably let's do two more. And the next one's going to be a little bit quicker. I'm, I'm just going to go over the technique for getting your um, uh, trigger point stuff, trigger point material, trigger point materials out. And we'll go with a different color because, you know, I don't, I don't really have a favorite um, CDC. There's, a, you just know when you grab it. But I will say this much: when you're looking for CDC, if you're looking in person, if you're lucky enough, and I'm usually not, to look in person, don't feel bad in the store about open. Don't like put them all back, but don't feel bad about opening up a pack of CDC. Like, just, <laughs> just looking at it. I mean, put them back in there. You know, don't just leave the feathers like laying around the store. You know. Just... Yeah. Put them back. Oh, shoot. Good advice, honey. All right. So I'm going to hold this right here, and um, y'all are like, oh, shoot. I'm going to hold my, my thread up, leave that little bit of bear, bear hook right behind the eye. And we'll start wrapping this back like so. Then we get one nice little thread body. Push that, lock it off, cut it off. So for those of y'all who didn't hear earlier, the challenge this week is going to be really simple. Um, we'd love to see your flies. Love to see your, your version of the Katie bug. Um, Michael, uh, I don't know if you're, you're on YouTube, but um, your Katie bug, your uh, initial fly looked great, but it looks like you didn't have that um, um, the loop on it. Um, so make sure you get that loop on there. Don, you said you tied something similar, but did the loop around the wing like a parachute. Um, yeah, that's a lot of people will, will do the CDC loop around. It basically just uses CDC loop as a, as a parachute hackle. That, that works fine too. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. All right, let's, let's the go to, for this week. okay. The challenge for this week is a guess what fly I've been working on recently. And it's something that you all have not seen before materials that, that I'll be having them using are, uh, Maribu and, more marabou and ice dub so we got some ice dub and 
Here's a couple things that'll give it away. Multiple sizes. Oh, this is one that didn't show last time. Multiple sizes here. Trick on the bottom. I, I'm the, you notice me slipping a little bit, Truman. So I'm not a hundred percent. Um, right here. So that's another thing. What was that? I didn't see that. Was that the, the surf, surf, one? surf one? Okay. And some beads. But here's the key key thing. You've got to, and there's there's more things on there. That, that gives a bunch of, bunch of things. You have to comment on the YouTube video after we post it. And then if most people will guess it, then we will uh, we'll draw a winner. And I'll send them the, the two or three of the versions that we've been tying. So the EP Trigger Point Fibers. Here's a brand new pack. This is a cool color I wanted to use. This is Cinnamon Caddis. I think, I think that'll work nice on, on these. So It's we'll a good fall flavor. Oh, yes, honey. Like big red is a big is a good fall flavor too. So I'm gonna um, just take the staple out. So I've got the let's switch back over to camera number three. All right, so I've got the, the sta table staple out. I'm gonna go ahead and, and trim the this label. Have you had the cinnamon caddis latte at Starbucks? It's oh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's back. Okay, now I'm trying to make a mess. Got the other one sitting there. Okay, so now the reason that I saved that is because I've got my material here, and now I can take the little little folder job here, and I got to put stuff back up, and just slide it back in the package like that, and then it goes in much easier, and then comes out. Hey guys, this is my light box back here. Oh yeah, yeah. ask Katie a question. That's where the magic happens. There's no camera in it right now because the camera is being used over there. But uh, yeah, that's my light box. And I have a, um, a piece of uh, plastic, like it's a plastic platform in there that you can put things on. And my ring flash is laying in there and some little tools and things I use to hold stuff up. So that's it. Glenn says it looks like transport for a transport for ET. <laughs> Yes, it's it's like it's a transporter, like on um, Star Trek. You mm -hmm. got you have to climb inside. It's like a mini one. All right. So I'm going to take the 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 Hank right here. That's that's uh, down here. Katie, we go to camera three, please. Four, five, four. Okay. So we've got the Hank here, and I'm going to pull off just a little bit. It's not tangly or anything. So, um, and I'm going to get just enough that it's all I need. So that, that looks like looks good. I'm gonna put an overhand knot, or if you want to do a figure eight, that's fine too. But an overhand knot in the in the material, and then use your bodkin because this stuff's expensive. We don't want to waste any of it. Use your bodkin. I'm trying to get it so you can see it. Stick in the loop and then pull it down so it's right there by the tie-off point. When you pull it tight. And then you can get your scissors, cut it right by the top point, and then put that away for later use. And you've got this for a whole bunch of flies. So that is how that is done. Pretty simple. Or well, that's it. Thank you, Freddie. Yeah. Thanks, Freddie. That's it. Katie, your Freddie gave you a nice compliment over there. He is. Sing I, I know. Praise. I said all oh, thanks. Oh, gee. I did. All right. Um, you know. So we got this cinnamon cat is tied in. I think this is gonna be a really cool color. I uh, will bring it over to the front. And Freddie or uh, Truman, answer your question. I think I need to loosen it up just a touch. I worked with it hard to get it good and loose. But hey, I figured if the cool kids use it, we'll give it a shot. All right, so we've got our, our um, shuck tied in here, and we'll throw another uh, another bio on there, see if I can get this one a little bit tied in a little bit better. Moisten it. We'll unwind my thread so it's going to lay a little flatter. And what Truman's talking about is my bobbin. I've had this for quite some time and um, 
I haven't really used it much and for no fault of anything other than I'm just, I just haven't used it. And bobbins, if you guys, it took me probably a year of time to realize this. You've got to adjust your bobbin when it's new. Um, you have to loosen up your bobbin or tighten it up in some cases, I guess. Um, if you don't, then every time you stop tying, you'll be pulling the, the thread down, pulling the thread down. You want the thread to come out as you're wrapping. So you can see the big flex in my hook. I'm trying to pull so the thread is coming out. And for me, that's just too much pulling. Um, but what you really don't want to do is I'll show you the bad technique as I'm doing this. So if you see you're going like this and I'm getting closer and closer and I get to here and then then pull down and keep going, you want there to be a steady pressure on your uh, on your bobbin at all times because when you pull down, you're going to leave like a little indentation there. Probably just nitpicking here. You're probably not that big a deal, but um, I do need to loosen this one up just a touch. Have the same Every bobbin is kind of different and you have to get used to Derek, when I when I reached out to the Schmahan guys, they, they said on this one in particular, you want to bend at let's see if I can show you. Um, so you want to bend at these angles right here. Because I was like grabbing it here. This has been about a year ago when I got this. It's grabbing it here, and I'm pulling apart. And they said, Don't do that because that can break it right here. Um, you want to grab here and bend so it's bending it. The angle here and possibly at the angle right here. Don't just grab the whole bobbin and pull it across like that, if that makes sense. Um, but you just got to make it looser and um, super tight out of the box. Yeah, the fixed one is super tight out of the box. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so we'll keep on tying. Did I put a half hitch in that? I did. Let's undo this, get that close enough. So we'll do this a little bit quicker this time because since I messed up the first one, this should go down. No problemo. There we go. So we'll just wrap this forward like so. That's good. So we got three or four wraps in there. Now we'll cut it off. We'll make this one a little bit thinner than that last one. Make sure everything's nice and bound down. Now we're gonna pull our dubbing out one more time. So we've got our K-pop um, separate fly. So you see how the, the fibers are kind of pulled out? It's kind of hard to tell, but they are um, they're more straight and in line this way, like they're going up and down. So when I when I grab the fibers to put them on a dubbing, put them on my noodle or to make a noodle, I just grab right here, pull across. So see how they're, they're lined up. So then I put it on my thread. And this is a teeny bit of dubbing. I wrap it around and it, and it wraps around nicely. Yes, you do. Did you tighten it up a little bit, Truman, from last time? It was it was really nice last time, but maybe it touched. You're like no, because it was perfect last time. <laughs> Didn't need to tighten it up. You need to tighten yours up. All right, so we got our, our noodle. We're gonna bring it back to roughly there. Bring it forward. Bring it back because we're trying to build this thorax here. Don't be afraid to pull the. Um, Pulling dubbing that you're not going to use off of the uh, off the thing. We go back to our oh, camera Derek, one, honey. Derek is these flies. Oh, Derek, these flies. Cool. Thank you. And and feel free. Like Ed was over here being all crazy, and we didn't know who he was. E. Richard should have should have known this. Um. So we've got our uh, got our fly tied right there, except for the wings. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to go a little bit quicker. So let's use this trout hunter. CDC, because when we're, when we're out on the water, sometimes the wings are bright, um, brightly colored, like yellow, like a skittle floating around. Sometimes the bodies are tan and the wings are tan. More times than not, they've usually got a really bright body and a tan color wing like this. 
So we're going to do the exact same thing we did a minute ago. Pull it down. Pull it till we hear the clip. Go snip, snip. Grab our... Oh, man, I had everything cleaned off here and everything. Now, Katie, where's my clip? All right, so we got this here. And we'll cut this off. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Let me know where. There we go. Stack it. Stack it. Now we've got our little our um, little pinch of CDC here. It's a good color. Yes, it is a good color. Thank you, Katie. Glenn is new flashback. Oh, new flashback, Glenn. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you for making the transition, guys. It's know, super it's like, cool. Oh, that's cool. It's like, it's like, oh, you know that they're there. And you're like, oh, yeah, they're there. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're saying. All right. So if you see, if you notice, all it is, I put two wraps here in the middle to capture it, one wrap in the front, ready to go. So now we see our W loop going. And um, let's see here. Find a feather. So it'll take me an hour to. Clip or unclip or whatever. That one's not very long. There we go. This one might work. So we take our um, take our feather and we're going to stroke it all backwards. Make sure it's long enough for it all carried away. And you can see on the, the close up here, maybe see how um, when I stroke it all backwards, there's this kind of junk here that's still stuck to the the butt end of it. Pull that off. That's not very good. Good job. Whoa, Western North Carolina, Gary Hanna. What's up, Gary? Um, all right, so if you'll flip back over to camera uh, three, there we go. So I'm going to take this, stick it right back in my clip. Sometimes it can be a little tricky getting it when you don't have much stem in there, but other times it goes like a dream. So you see we've got, the, got that here. And Gary was one of the guys that told me to try the darker colored shucks. And they work. Or was that a secret I wasn't supposed to share, Gary? I don't know. Gary's got a few. Gary, you'll have to uh, get in on this. What is What are John and Katie tying next challenge? Gary because Barnes. you have, Gary, Hannah, have inspired a movement on this end that Gary Barnes is encouraging tremendously. All right, so we've got our uh, our dummy loop in there. I don't know how you can, which, which shot you can see it better, but there. so that one you can see pretty good. But the other one would do the one. So we're going to twist this up. It's a cool hackle tool. Is that stunt? Which, which one, Glenn? Um, for the YouTube names, I know I need to change. Gary Barnes, I was talking about Gary Hannah. But you're like me. I'm the only John out there. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's like, oh there's a few Johns, honey. Well, like, hey, you he said hey to me already. It's okay. Like, oh, he's talking. There's another John in the room. It's Petagene. It's a Petagene tool. Depending on which one you're looking at. The, this is. He said um, the one where you inserted the CDs. So this right here is the Mark M A R C Petagene, P E T I J E A N um, tool. Uh, someone said the correct nomenclature for this one. Ooh, big word from this guy. Um, I don't know if this is midge or mini. This is a teeny tiny one. You get a kit that has like a, bu like a bunch of different sizes of these, um, of the tools themselves and just the widths of them. But for this one, we just need the smaller one. And I really like the midge one for smaller flies. Anyway, um, well, Glenn or Glenn, um, you're all good on your on the shuck. Um, so Gary Barnes, when you come up here next little bit, whenever that's going to be, sooner than later, you're going to, have to meet Gary Hanna. He's a super cool dude. All right, so that we're going, way we can be with the Garys. That's right, Gary squared. And then we can go visit Gary Wade. Gary. That's right, your dad, Gary. They're going to be so confused because I know. You know, my dad's Gary too. Gary's a great name, guys. 
All right, so we got our two wraps behind the. Uh, we got two wraps behind. What's up, Trout Deceiver? And how about that, Brian? Thank you for telling me I'm totally out of focus. I'm, I'm so I just don't look down on this part. Oh, Keisha wants to um, know if the mystery fly has hackles. Uh, yes. Do you all want to see the hackle? It's going to have. Let, let me wrap this. Ask me again, yes, and I'll show do. you the hackle. Okay. So I've done two wraps behind the butt sections here. I'm going to pull everything back like so and expose that little bit of dubbing right there. And I'm going to cram this stuff in, pull it back with each wrap, just like so. This one, this uh, CDC is not quite as thick, which is okay. And we'll bring our thread forward. You can see the eye looks much better than the last one. See how the eye? Oh, look at that. That's prettier. It's a lion's mane. That's right. So now we'll do the same thing we did. Evening from down under, Trout Deceiver. Hey, Trout Deceiver, if you can, uh, look up, look us up on YouTube because you can see us a lot easier. Still no long distance calling from... from uh, Australia. Do you need to color the thread? And uh, I've got a little bit left on there okay. still. Um, and, and Katie was right. If I, if I didn't have any of the yellow on there, I'd want to color it. Well, I'm going to give all the credit to um, um, uh, Surfer Dad, Ed. So did Ed like say, hey, dude? E. Richard said color the thread. Oh, E. Richards, a.k.a. Surfer Dad. That's right. Well, it is already colored in, but thank you. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these scissors up. The way I usually trim these is, is first step, I flip it upside down and just do a quick trim on the bottom because I don't want that. It's fine. You don't really have to do all that, but see how the bottom looks a little bit better. So when the fish sees it, um, it's going to have that nice body, the nice little taper that the, Adam, the, the Cape Hawk made, um, <clears throat> nice little segmentation in there, and uh, I've got that bottom. I, I think that this part here, the butt ends is a little bit too long, so what I do is I pull all this forward. Usually I'll wait for that glue to dry just a little bit. Pull this up, and I'll just give this a quick little, little oomph. Now, you don't have to trim much of it off, because you can see there's still still some there. If you want to trim more, it's fine. But um, it's better to leave it too long than too short. Um, Western North Carolina, Gary, wanted to know the color of the CDC you're using. The, well, we're using all different kinds of colors. This is just Trout Hunter. Uh, what color? Natural brown. Natural brown. But the color that's marked. Okay. Um, I, I earlier used the pale yellow in this, and I've also used blue done and the MFC stuff. Um, all sorts of colors. Uh, I mean, it's just that's what's cool when you're and Gary's seeing them out there. You'll have some of the wings here this color, some of them that are bright yellow, some of them that are whatever. Um, so you can go through it, you can rip. Um, if you want to get a first little start, just rip off some of the fibers, like so. If that's not long enough or not short enough, you can the key thing is just don't put your scissors like that and cut across. Just kind of rough it up. There's nothing wrong with cutting it. And that's a good question. Talk about the kind of floating that we use for the CDC. So CDC, great question. Um, the first time we fish it, I'll use Loon Locksha. That's L-O-C-H, L-O-C-S-H-A. Um, and that is designed um, for CDC. And then after that, I'll use the, the dry shake. So... Just the loon locks is a gel, and Katie's going to get it right now. She'll show it to us. Um, the um, so you treat it with the gel before you get it wet, and then uh, as the, the fly becomes waterlogged or you get fish slime on it or whatever the case is, uh, then you put it in the um, the dry sink. So she's going to uh, show that here in a second. And uh, on Instagram, J Jacob, uh, this is these are the EP trigger point fibers. I use all different kinds of colors. This is a new package I just opened up. This is um, caddis, cinnamon caddis. Um, I really like the, the color of this one, but I'll use uh, almost like a dark red or rust um, for the tail. And I'll, I'll use 
uh, yellow to uh, to like a blue dun. So Katie, show us the um, the the, the laksha real quick. So there's the loon laksha. So how do you put that on? First, the first time you use it, just a little bit. Yeah, like usually there's I enough just in the cap. Use, like what's in? The, open it up and like there's like some in the top here. That's what I use. Just barely any. And then did you get the dry shade? I did. And then once it gets waterlogged, then you use this. And I tend to use too much on this because it's sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, and that that stuff like when you after you shake it up in there and pull it out because you put the fishing line and everything in there, shake it up, pull it out, uh, it'll look like a little cotton ball. And then once you cast it once, once it goes to there, most of it flicks off, and then it hits the water, and, and you'll be able to see it because uh, it's bright white. But when it's bright white, the fish nail it. Um, I don't know if it's because it's higher up in the water column or what, but the fish fish love it. Okay, so this one's pretty much done. I mean, I could trim off a little bit more of it, but, you know, it's kind of like trimming deer hair. You can just trim forever on them. Um, just kind of make it however you want. But see, with that nice upright wing, it's not going mean, to, if I pull it down, that's me pulling it down pretty, pretty hard. It's still going to be there. Um, it doesn't take much to pop it back up. Uh, good silhouette on there. So these two were using tools. Let's do one real quick one without tools. I think, do we have time, honey? Uh, well, we're at an hour and one minute right now. Oh, shucks. Uh, I'll just go over the technique real quick with the tools. Y'all rubber band them before the dry shake. Um, oh, the Gulf Duck. I, I, I need to start using that one. I've not used that, Jeff. Um, I have not used the golf duck. Um, I, I just like grab my shirt and like squeeze them. That's a really cool idea. That's a cool uh, uh, technique. This one that I saw Lance Egan use, that's just having a rubber band on your, like tied onto you somewhere and you pull out the rubber band and you stick it on there and flick the rubber band like a guitar string and it just flicks it around. Um, I just haven't tried it. Most of the time when it's wet, I'll flick it back and forth with my rod. I'll grab it, still wet, I'll just go back and forth with it. And then I'll put it in the, the dry shake. Um, but the, the key thing, the key thing in the, the, uh, the Amadou patch, I think you used mine one time, um, uh, Gary, Hannah. Um, the key thing is once you put the liquid on there and you fished it and it's wet, you want to use the dry stuff and make sure that you're using with the CDC, make sure you're using a uh, floating design for CDC. It is more expensive, but it will make the fly perform the way you want it to versus making the CDC virtually fall apart. So I carry um, a uh, Lunok well or a different, um, a different type of uh, floating, floating or not CDC yeah. glass. There we go, honey. Thank you. All right, so we do the same thing. Pull this back, which I just kind of quit. So this is for anyone who doesn't have all those fancy tools. And there's also like sponges from Hairline. You can use a um, magic eraser and make your own. There's some Stompho tools. I haven't used Jeff's probably used those. Jeff uh, Rowley, I have not. I don't have those. I don't I haven't used them. They're probably just fine. Um, there's a bunch of different tools, and maybe I'll do a uh, maybe not even a live show. Maybe just do a show on um, on all the different tools. But I've got to get some more of them. Um, all right, plop this on there. Just super quick. And if you don't want to use um, on the size 18 that we posted today, it might be a couple of size 18s in there. Probably should have done it on this one. Uh, the the body is just pure K-pop. There's no um, um, biot. There's no biot on it. So if you don't want to use a biot, that's fine. Just use uh, variation too far off this week. I don't. Think which one was yours? Was yours the beetle with the hackle on it? Can't remember. Let's see here. All right, we're just going to wrap this quickly. 
I'll tell you one thing. I've had the darn, the darndest of times today with uh, getting the buyout to be on the right side. Yeah, well, the bad thing is my um, it's twisting. There you go. There we go. I blame it on the uh, the lighting, but you know that's just an excuse. Uh, what's up, guys? Hello from Four Corners in, in Idaho. The Four Corners fire in Idaho? Uh, is there a fire up in Idaho right now? I don't. Oh, it's um, Shane. Shane, are you working a fire? Shane, hop over on YouTube. Please. We better, we better see your comments and not leave you hanging out there because I'm not looking at the comments too much on uh, on Instagram. Well, here, that was a joke. It really, it really wasn't a golf dog. Yep. I'm going to have to place an order for some golf stuff and get probably get some of that duck to try it out. All right, I'm doing this one really quick, so bear with me. So same thing, work our way back to where, kind of where we want it and bring it forward right to the eye. And bring our, our dubbing back. Have it something like that. And we'll go there. Okay, so what we want to do is I'll use go with that same tan. We'll get a couple decent sized feathers. Natural brown. Natural brown. Thank you, honey. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky. We're gonna do this with no tools. This is the Schmayhen style wing. So if you look, <clears throat> I'm gonna grab it by the tips. And we'll pull down and up and make a nice little splitting point here. We can't see. Pull your hands down a little. Oops, sorry. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just trying to. There we go. So I'm making a nice little split split point here. So I've got all the fibers going down like this this way. As I'm holding the butt ends, and the tips are right there. That's the tip of the CDC feather I'm holding the butt end. So I'm just going to take it like so and trim that off. Okay, so now I pinch these because I'm going to keep those together. Now I've got the butt ends there. And I take everything and pull it forward. Man, this used to be my jam. I don't do this all the time. I don't know why. I just I love this technique. The guys that, I don't know if the, the Schmahan guys created this or not, but this, this is who I learned this from and it was awesome. What's up, all flies? Good to see you. Um, okay, so we'll and and for I think CMDW who said, "Well, did my thing not make it?" Um, if you post something and we don't share it, let me know because uh, AK Sledneck One, who is uh, Randy, he sent us a note earlier this week and was like, "Can you all see my fly?" Um, and uh, yeah, they're by knots tonight. What are we selling to, John? A heck of a time finding the resins. Yeah, that's, yep. I can't get, yep. Um, what was I saying? You were saying that um, Sledneck was saying. Oh, that... Sledneck posted some stuff, and I looked, and it had the right hashtag on it, and I couldn't see it. So I went to his page, and I saw it, and I shared it, but I, I couldn't see it on the hashtag uh, list. That's weird. So if I don't post something, then let me know. So I've done this two or three times. Um, so I just have my, my thread. We're ready to go just like normal. Normally, I'll stick a stack of CDC on there. Take the CDC feather. This is two of them. And see the butt ends are cut there. We'll capture this in like so. Straight up, straight down. Now we're going to pull this back and see the tips. You can almost see the tips, but you'll be able to feel because I'm pulling up my thread. There we go. A little bump there. Just a little bump, and just for the heck of it, you can feel right here. Make sure there's nothing sticking forward. So there's a little bump. Now we're going just to do behind the two. Just behind the two reps. And just for the fun of it, we'll do three. So now we've got that tied in. We got their front wing and our butts. The exact same we did before, no tools. Now I'm going to grab another um, C to C feather. Okay. So I'm going to take the tip. This is going to get just a shade messy, but I think you'll get my point. I'm going quick. So we'll take the tip here. So for those, okay. 
tip here same place i just just crossed over two or three times we'll tie that tip in pull it back just a little bit there's another one i'm grabbing everything I'm grabbing the tip pulling it back if i can get it okay there's two wraps there i'll put a couple wraps here to lock it in i'm not gonna try to cut it off super super short so now we're pretending like our CDC feather here is our dubbing loop. So we'll go around. Bring this around. Pull this. We'll put a couple wraps. And you don't want to, I probably should grab my high pliers again. You don't want to... Um, Go like use the whole feather because the stem is going to get too thick on you. Um, the better the CDC is, and honestly, the more expensive. But if you'll just sort through and find a nice CDC feather, it won't um, be as uh, the stem won't be as thick. So we'll take our uh, our thread, bring it over just like a regular hackle. One, two, three. Pull tight, pull all everything back. Again, it's two wraps behind the eye. And we'll do three, four, just because I, just because I'm feeling crazy. All right, so now we'll take this, cut that off. Just for the heck of it, now we'll get this, cut that off. And then we'll whip finish this. And pretty much whoever said make sure I color my thread, try a really special jelly bean zonker. Yeah, that's what you need to do. See you, Bill. Sorry, I went on way too long. We're going to hop off here. Bye, Bill. Order some yellow from the Friday. I can't believe that. Okay. So, I didn't put any, any Sally Hansen's on that one, but it's okay. I'll still have it. I'll take it. <laughs> you can just put that one in my flat box. Okay, so we're now now we'll do the same thing as before. We'll flip it over, cut the bottom, and so this is you can get the drift. For now, we're going to trim the top just by ripping it. So this is no tools. The same thing, just no tools. There's definitely some differences in it, but you don't have to have all those fancy tools to do it. Uh, the key thing you're looking for is look look underneath it. And as opposed to just being a regular upwing fly, you want all the stuff to be going down the sides as well. So it has something to land on, something to sit on to kind of keep it from hitting the water and then laying on side. 